This is Echo 3, and let's discuss career mode. Maybe you're new to the game or just want to try out career mode. I hope to show you some helpful tips for getting into the game. This is the screen you should see right after loading. Let's skip all those pesky in-game tutorials and jump right in. I'm going to be using the normal settings. The settings themselves can be customized to make the game harder or easier to your liking, but default is usually a good place to start. We are going to be greeted by Gene Kerman, but I'll be your guide. Looking around, all the buildings are in their level 1 state and can each be upgraded two more times. Mission Control is where we select our contracts. This building will need to be upgraded to make maneuver nodes and to have more active contracts. The Vertical Assembly Building, or VAB, is typically where vertically launched rockets are designed. Early in career mode, we'll be focusing on this building, the launch pad, for launching. Bigger rockets will necessitate upgrading the VAB and launch pad. The tracking station is for keeping track of all of our ongoing missions, locating asteroids, and it too will need to be upgraded to use maneuver nodes. The research and development buildings are where we will spend our science points to unlock more parts. To further advance in the tech tree, collect surface samples, or fly under bridges, the R&D buildings will need to be upgraded. As is, we can only unlock the first five tiers. I hope to show you why I spend my science points the way I do. The astronaut complex is for housing our Kerbals. Kerbals can be recruited here at great cost. The buildings themselves will need to be upgraded to perform EVAs when not landed or to recruit more than 12 Kerbals. The space plane hangar has different camera tools from the VAB and is much more suited for designing aircraft and space shuttles. Next to the space plane hangar is the runway. It too will need to be upgraded to launch bigger planes. Lastly, the administration building. Here you can set up strategies to exchange reputation, money, and science points. I personally don't use it much, but that's not to say there aren't uses for it, I just don't care to mess with it. Okay, let's get started. We need something to do. Let's go over to Mission Control and pick some contracts. As is, we can only have two active contracts. As our reputation increases, we will also get more contract offers. These are all world-first contracts. They can be useful for guiding your career. I'm picking Launch Our First Craft and Gather Science. These will be very easy to complete, netting us reputation, science, and funds. I am playing with the Making History and Breaking Ground DLCs, so you may see parts or features that you do not have. I also have a few quality of life mods visible, but they are not going to change the gameplay. Now that we have a mission, let's build a craft that is able to fulfill these contracts. The VAB is where we shall build. The parts listed are mostly empty. We will have a lot of parts to unlock. Let's get a command pod for our Kerbals. The paint drop lets us change part colors. Next, since I want our Kerbals to live, I'm placing a parachute on this pod. Since we only have one option in the engine category, I'm going to use it. Next, I'm putting on some science equipment. We only have the mystery goo. The other parts are from the mod Kerbal Engineer. Lastly, I'm going to be adding a few fins from the aerodynamic section. We are going to put Jebediah in this and check our staging. I want the engine to fire first and use the parachutes last. I've seen some players not understand how the staging works, and they fire both the parachute and the rocket at the same time, and they have issues. Uh, matter of fact, that actually happened on a real rocket recently, and resulted in the pilot dying, so we're going to be careful and check our staging. On the launch pad, I'm going to gather some science. I don't know why we are the first on Kerbin to do that, but let's go ahead and launch. We'll get some science from the atmosphere, too we can get up into only the lower atmosphere with this rocket. Now, let's deploy our parachute and safely land. Make sure to get any science from your landing site, too. We can recover the vessel to get the science and refund on our parts. The refund is based on the distance from the Kerbal Space Program facilities. Crew will also gain experience based off of any new places they have visited. All right. Back to Mission Control for some new contracts. As a general rule, I avoid all of the atmospheric part testing contracts. The parameters can be rather difficult to meet. Since we can't build planes yet either, I'm going to avoid all of the science gathering contracts on Kerbin surface and in its atmosphere. What we can do is we can make a suborbital rocket. So let's get the ones to escape the atmosphere and to test the engine at the launch site. Those should be pretty easy. In the R&D building, we can spend our science points. As a guideline, it is best to spend science points on technologies that can unlock 
more science experiments so we can get more science quicker. We have enough to unlock the entire second tier and one more. I'm going to pick the one that unlocks the barometer science experiment. The others will be useful but we can only pick one third tier at the moment. I'm looking around a few of the other technologies just to see what's there but we're gonna go with this one because it'll be the most useful. We go back to the vertical assembly building and we can upgrade our first rocket for the suborbital flight. I'm going to be using a two-stage liquid-fueled rocket making use of the separatons and the engines we have just unlocked. The swivel engine is able to gimbal and that can be a very helpful attribute. As I add parts I'm going to be checking the stats of the rockets. I want to make sure that we will have enough delta V and a high enough thrust to weight ratio for the mission. I have a mod called Kerbal Engineer to quickly see these stats, but these figures are now available in the base game by pressing the delta V button on the bottom right. Since I started using Kerbal Engineer before the feature was added to the game, I am more comfortable with it. Although, in either case, you're going to want to know these numbers to make an effective rocket. You can get these numbers if you want to figure them out by hand. It's just a lot easier to use the in-game tools. Now, I'm going to make sure I add lots of science experiments to our rocket. I want to make the most of this little hop. Since our pilot cannot get out of the pod while in flight, I cannot reuse these experiments. Also, due to the limitations of the facilities, we are going to have a part limit. This means I can only have 30 parts on this craft and I'm going to have to make some choices. In the end you'll see that I choose to go with a 3 fin as opposed to a 4 fin configuration on the bottom of this rocket. It's not really going to affect anything but it is something to consider when you have a part limit when you're building your rockets. I also, because I have the Making History DLC and the um, Breaking Ground DLC, I can change the appearance of my Kerbals and you can see that I have access to different um, uniforms and it looks like we'll get even more options in the 1.10 update. On the launch pad, I'm going to gather the science from there before we launch. Okay, let's go. By firing the swivel engine on the launch pad, we were able to complete the first contract. Now, we only need to get higher than 70 kilometers to fulfill the second. Let's not forget to gather as much science on this trip. We can get low atmosphere science, upper atmosphere science, and low space science. There are many different instances that an experiment can be conducted. Note too that the game differentiates between landed and splash down I angled my launch a little bit so that we won't come straight down. This lets us use the air to slow down a, a little bit more. Once we have slowed down sufficiently, uh, specifically quite a ways under subsonic, we'll be able to deploy our parachute and gently touch down. Remember, get all the science. We have contracts paying for this launch, so we might as well get as much free science from this trip as possible. Um, I'm going to point out at the end of this flight my game froze up and I am going to have to reload. Fortunately I cut all of that out for you but I had a weird problem when I tried to recover the craft with the game froze on me. Um, reloading the game solved my problem but I did have to recover the craft from the tracking station as opposed to just hitting the recover button here. I don't know what happened. This was a weird bug. I've never seen this before. Maybe you've had something similar and can explain it to me, but I don't know. All right, got all the science. We recover the craft. Well, eventually I'm able to recover the craft. But we get all this science and we are ready to go. In the R&D building, we now have access to lots of better parts. Again, I prioritize science experiments. I also decide to get advanced rocketry. This unlocks the Terrier engine. It is one of the better vacuum engines and will be useful for landing on the Mun, Minimus, and maybe even Duna. Now we need some more contracts to do. We have plenty of technology to achieve orbit, so I'll pick that one. We can pick one more contract. What should we combine with this mission? 
We can test the small heat shield as long as we land in water. That one seems very doable. Okay, let's build another rocket. We'll use the same command pod and we'll add our little heat shield to test. We can get rid of the ablator though to save weight. Next, we'll add a parachute and a decoupler. For the upper stage, we should use our newly unlocked Terrier engine. It has the highest vacuum specific impulse of all the engines we have unlocked. That means we can more efficiently use the small amount of fuel as long as the air pressure around the engine is fairly low. Here, I'm going to use the in-game Delta V calculator. I'm going to try some different tank sizes to see what will work best for this upper stage. In the end, I choose the FL T400 fuel tank to make sure we have enough delta V to reach orbit and deorbit. Next, let's make a lower stage using the biggest solid rocket booster we have unlocked. The Thumper can't gimbal though, so we'll need to make use of the small reaction wheels in the command pod to tilt this rocket. I'm going to add a few fins for stability. You can see I'm also reducing the thrust of the solid rocket booster. Ideally I'm wanting a thrust to weight ratio of around 1.3 on my lower stage here. Uh, too much thrust and actually it's, this rocket's going to be hard to control and get a proper gravity turn. I'm going to add some extra battery capacity so we don't run out of electricity. Because none of the engines on this rocket generate electricity, what we take up is all we get with us. Lastly, I'm adding a few science experiments because I want to squeeze every last bit of science out of this mission. All right, And I like to use the fine placement tool sometimes just to make my rocket look prettier. This will not affect the performance of the rocket at all. This is merely for aesthetics. All right, double check the staging. Give the rocket a witty name like to orbit and let's go. All right, Jeb looks ready. SAS is turned on. Let's go to space today. I'm going to tilt the rocket slightly to the east shortly after launch. The key to reaching orbit is speed, so I want to be going horizontally as fast as possible. Now the Terrier has an awful performance in the lower atmosphere, so I need the solid rocket booster to get the craft going horizontally as fast as possible while also reaching an altitude around 20 kilometers. The maneuver is called a gravity turn. After the little tilt, the rocket pretty much holds prograde on the nav ball. Once we are high enough, the Terrier will be able to get us the rest of the way into orbit. Because I haven't unlocked the maneuver nodes yet, I'll be doing all the maneuvering just by watching my orbital parameters. Uh, orbital speed around Kerbin for low Kerbin orbit is around 2300 meters per second, so that's kind of a key number to be watching on the nav ball. As I approach the apoapsis, I'm going to burn prograde in order to finish circularizing my burn, and that's pretty much all there is to reaching orbit. Once you kind of figured out how it works, it's not too hard. You can even do it without maneuver notes. Once we reach orbit, there really isn't much else we can do in space, so we can head back home. Remember, we do need to land in the water to fulfill the second contract, so I'm going to try and burn retrograde and aim somewhat close to the Kerbal Space Center. So that looks pretty good. At this velocity, we can safely re-enter the atmosphere without a heat shield, so we'll be all right. We'll deploy the parachute and make sure we safely land in the water here. I'm going to right click on the heat shield after we land in the water and select the option to test the part. After that, the mission will be accomplished. We can see we gathered a little more science and that Jeb has leveled up. Thanks for joining me on Discussing Career Mode.